we are going to do an example of how to do an estimation in Excel. So rather than predicting a classification, you know, donor, not donor, churner, not churner, we're going to do a continuous variable. This particular data set is up from uh, the Boston Housing Prices data set, medium values of homes, based on some attributes. On the right-hand side, you've got the, the actual diction data dictionary that tells you each one of those attributes. But we want to build models that predict the me medium value um, of the owner-occupied homes in the thousands of dollars. So what we do is in the data mining tabs we can use the estimate or we can um, <coughs> in the advanced ones use any of the techniques that do estimations. So that could be the trees and the neural networks um, and the regression, linear regression in this case. So let's just show you an estimation. Tell we want to do that table. We want to predict median value. And so we're going to remove that as a regressor and as an input column. Uh, we have a, t a, suggest um, a way here to do feature selection on the spot. So we can ask it to suggest. And it will suggest what it thinks are important attributes in predicting that median value of a home. So it assigns them a score and it says which one of these attributes, and in fact I think it found all but one. Um, we say next. We also need to set aside some data for testing because again we don't want to test on data that we trained. So we can leave it at 30%. It's going to create a structure. Now we want to, let's add one more model to that structure we just created. Let's, uh, let's add a linear regression. Made a mistake here. We need to tell it that med V is what we want to predict. So we'll say predict. And let's add also a neural network. I'm going to tell it we wanted to predict the median value of the home. Now you'll notice if we go ask for a classification matrix, it's going to say, you, I can't give you a classification matrix because you are doing a continuous variable. So I can look at the accuracy chart. And I'll do it for the whole structure. And say median value is the, my column of interest. And I'm going to use the test data that I set aside, that 30%. And now I get um, <coughs> a straight line, which would be the perfect prediction, right? It, if you see, that's the actual value across the x-axis and the predicted value across the y-axis. So if I predicted 10 and it was actually 10, I would fall on that line. So the closer I am to that line, the better I'm in predicting. And, I, and we can make the comment, number one, that the linear regression doesn't do as well. It's a, it's a lot looser. And same with, with neural net. The tree seems to be doing actually the best, having the least point, with the exception of this point. We can also see that we do a lot better when the values are somewhere around 15 and ah, 35. And then when the values start getting higher or lower, then we, we get these, these crazy points outside of the mean. And we can use these scores, which is probably a mean square error score, to select which model is, is best. And in this case, it's actually telling us the linear regression is best. Uh, I, by looking at this chart, I would actually say it, it must be averaged across the whole, the whole uh, possible values, but I actually would have picked um, the, the tree, which was the very first model that we ran. <coughs>